Hey friends, welcome to the very first episode of Good Looking Kickstarters. I'm one of your hosts, Becca Scott, and here is my excellent and wonderful friend and co-host, Ruel Gaviola. Hey, Ruel. Hi, Becca. On this show, we want to show you what makes our wallets go, mmm. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. And sometimes, um, oh God, I ate too much. Or not again. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> We're highlighting some Kickstarters that we're into that are either going right now or ending soon, or I guess those aren't mutually exclusive, and just awesome stuff we want you to check out. A lot of these also have late pledges, so if the original run is over, you can still get in there. Right, Ruel? Oh, that's right. Your wallet's going to keep saying, mmm. Ruel, I think you should kick it off and, wait, hold on. Do I smell bacon? Mmm. Well, bacon does make my tummy go, mmm. But mm. this has nothing to do with a bacon. It is Oink Games. They are kickstarting three different games. Not one, not two, but three. Uh, we have In a Grove, we have Dokojong, and Moon Adventure. Moon Adventure is the sequel to Deep Sea Adventure, which is one of my favorite games. Um, it's a cooperative style game where you are going to be launched into space and collecting space goodies. Um, I don't believe that's the official term, but it's my term and I'm sticking to it. Um, I'm looking forward to all three games. Uh, they put absolutely fantastic products out there and this one for me is an automatic back love it love it love the auto back <laughs> oh my gosh uh all right well i'm going to kick off what i am perked up about when i skim the kickstarters lately and i got a shout out the sky left us this is a queer sci-fi visual novel. It's kind of like a video game, but more of that, uh, if you've ever seen like a Japanese dating sim, where you're kind of just experiencing a narrative in an interactive way. And this one looks fantastic. It's about climate change, classism, and kissing hotties is the tagline. Um, it kind of reminds me of Dream Daddies, which is a very fun interactive fiction that I'm a big fan of. Um, and I thought it was fun that the Philly-based Ratworn Games is the creators of Event Horizon Universe of LARPs and uh, I just thought it was charming that it's like well what do LARPers do when they have to stay at home? They create queer visual novels. So I'm um, very excited about the trip hop soundtrack going on. The, an original soundtrack is always a good time and I just really love the art style and the inclusivity of this project so um, I just uh, want to put the word out there that uh, the sky left us. Check it out. I was going to say I love the very diverse cast that they have here and you know that's something that's neat about Kickstarter is that we can have creators who really push the boundaries and just think outside of the box really then you know and bring in diverse characters and uh, storylines and so forth so this one looks like a lot of fun Becca. Yeah absolutely. Um, what else you got for me Ruel? Well Becca I've got this really cool thing that I just got into recently and it's RPG zines. Uh, these are role-playing zines um, that you can play by yourself or with others but this one that I'm into is called Bucket of Bolts. It's a solo player RPG zine and what you're doing is you're creating a spaceship. So think Millennium Falcon, uh, Serenity, the Battlestar Galactica. Think of those great ships, right, in all the sci-fi stories. But what you're doing is you're telling the story of that ship. Uh, not only how it was built and stuff, but its history through the different captains that have helmed them. So it's a really interesting thing. Um, I think I'm a big fan of this because I enjoy these RPG solo zines as a quiet time for myself, you know. Just a way to relax and sort of, you know, get outside of everything that's going on and just chill, have my cup of Earl Grey with hot um, lemon and honey and relax and tell a story. Uh, so that's Bucket of Bolts that is um, now on Kickstarter. Well, you know, drinking Earl Grey is a very sci-fi themed beverage, uh, as we know from Captain Picard of the USS yes. Enterprise. Um, and this is part of Zine Quest, right? So what is Zine Quest, Becca? Well, I am so glad you asked. Zine Quest is a special promotion of all zines that are on Kickstarter throughout the month of February. So basically anything can be eligible if it's put up for a two week campaign in February. And um, there's some restrictions that you can find if you Google or uh, search on Kickstarter for Zine Quest, but they are highlighting single color, unbound, folded, stapled, or saddle-stitched RPG zines 
on A5 or smaller paper. I don't know what A5 is, but I think it's like when it. Yeah, it's right like, about there. Yeah, it's it's small, so it's so, what a cool concept, right? I mean, to create a game, a role playing game in this like single sheet of paper that's been folded all neat and stuff. Yeah, and just thinking back to friends back home in Kansas City that love zines. Zines have this rich history of being sort of like a counterculture way to spread information in uh, not even as organized as say a newspaper, but it's kind of like, hey, let me teach you facts about being vegan or whatever it is. I know I definitely put out that zine when I was in high school, not even knowing it was called a zine. I love it. That's so cool, Becca. I Confession, I actually published zines back in the day as well, many, many years ago. Uh, right, you know, I, the, the world was still in black and white, but and this is the way we would uh, communicate was through zines. And yeah, it's like you said, it's a rich world full of interesting history. Hold on, I need to know more. What was the zine you put out? I put a zine called <laughs> I put out a zine called Amusing Yourself to Death. It was <laughs> and it, it's funny, it was a review zine. So I would have other publishers send me their zines and I would review them. So oh I like gosh. to say I was like the uh, the Yelp of zines of the uh, 90s. <laughs> that is incredible. You were always a connector. There you go. <laughs> there it is, yeah. Okay, can I tell you about something that I am really stoked on. What are you stoked on, Becca? Well, it already is well, well beyond funded and uh, not much time to go, but I think you're still gonna be able to get le late pledges in there. It's called Radlands. This is from Roxley Games, and our buddies at Roxley have put out some amazing stuff like Santorini, Dice Throne, Dice Throne Season 2, Dice Throne Adventures, Brass Birmingham. I know you love that one, Ruel. Yeah, I love that game. I love that game. So we both know Roxley Games only puts out the most polished of products, and this is no exception with Radlands. It's a two-player game, a duel, if you will, that has this very apocalyptic theme, this flashy neon art. It really reminds me of Telltale's Tales from the Borderlands, which kind of has that like heavy outlined cartoon feel, but just gorgeous art, lots of purples and blues and whites. And um, this was developed by a guy named Daniel Peachnik, who also worked on some supplementary stuff for Magic the Gathering. I'm a huge MTG fan, and so I really love um, like a two-person uh, card duel game. And this is definitely a complex one, but not the same level of text on a card as say MTG or some other things. Like um, it kind of feels like it's gameplay in the world of maybe Keyforge or Eternal, where basically each player has three camp cards and water is your resource, which are represented by these gorgeous wooden water tokens. And whoever can eliminate the opponent's three camp cards first is the winner. I'm really excited about this because um, not only do they have a really sweet magnetic box on the Kickstarter, but um, it's one of those that I think I could show it to someone that doesn't have as much history or knowledge of trading card games or expandable card games and they'd be able to jump in based on my preliminary impressions from the trailer. Uh, so I'm really excited and maybe I already backed it. Just maybe <laughs> I already did that. <laughs> I figured this was an instant back for you, Becca. I mean, just the whole uh, tie-in to Magic the Gathering. I know that's your jam and this this one looks right. Yeah, this, this, is, this is your thing right here. Now, the world may feel semi-apocalyptic at times. Maybe that's something to do with my uh, being drawn towards Radlands. What else is going on in an apocalyptic setting, Ruel? Well, speaking of, Becca, this is a game called Post-Human Saga and the Journey Home Expansion. It is a post-apocalyptic game uh, from Mighty Boards. Uh, this one funded in four hours. So it's, what? you know, yeah, what, at four hours, that's, insane um but uh, from what i've seen and the, just checked out the preview here it is a post-apocalyptic narrative storytelling game but players are going to work on different objectives um so we've got some dice rolling got some uh push your luck and there's like over 100 different storylines that you can go through in this game so you've got like encounters and stuff so i'm i like this type of game you know it's um sort of got that walking dead feel to it i mean there are no like walkers or anything but it's got that really uh that that sense of dread you know when the world has gone to uh, laid to waste here so i'm um, looking forward to this one 
Yeah, I see sort of the resources you're collecting or in your objectives is represented by a shopping cart. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, you know, you go on the street, you're just, you're trying to survive. And it's all about survival mode, which, you know, uh, some of us may uh, know a thing or two about. Ruel is saying we're both doomsday preppers. No big Pretty deal. much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we're preparing by hoarding as many board games as possible. Exactly. And <laughs> I, I think we do a pretty good job of it too, Becca. So <laughs> I think so. So, Becca, if you check the uh, Kickstarter page here, you, you'll see some minis in there. And that's always a good thing when you got those different le pledge levels. And I don't know about you, but I see minis. I go click, click, click. You know? Uh-oh. Is that what gets you? Have yeah. you been painting? Um, I don't do painting, unfortunately, but I do have a, a hookup area. You know, I've got some friends that do it. And, you know, if you, if you just, you know, be nice to your friends, sometimes they'll do you favors. And that's that's what I like to do. So be nice to your friends with paint. Exactly. Painting friends are good friends. <laughs> oh, another thing I'd, I would like to point out, this is a really cool thing. It has a solo mode. And, you know, nowadays, since, you know, we can't get together for open game nights anymore, solo modes are a big thing. And I like seeing that from a lot of different publishers now. They're baking them in so you don't have to, like, try to figure out how to play a game by yourself. They do have that um, in this Kickstarter. Absolutely. I need it because if we're not on Tabletop Sim or Tabletopia, got to have that solo mode. Exactly. And also got to pick up the games that you'll be able to play with your friends when the time comes. What about you, Becca? Anything else that uh, catches your eye there on uh, Kickstarter? Okay, this may be a little too on brand for me, um, but I have another queer RPG themed thing I want to highlight. Dungeon Bitches, a queer TTRPG. Let me just read their definition of why bitches. In short, because bitch is a word thrown at women who refuse to be compliant or subservient, and we want to embrace that. In this game, all player characters are bitches. They're women who will no longer sit down and shut up and do as they're told. And in a certain kind of horrible patriarchal society, there's no room for that sort of woman. That's pretty awesome. I was going to say, that's pretty badass. So, <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah, um, straight up. I, I really like this like rough and rugged dungeony art. I realize I'm drawn towards things that are purple a lot, or maybe it's just in the zeitgeist of games right now. It, purple is the color. There is a warning. The game contains gore, nudity, and sexuality. So you know I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> this is also your jam, nice. <laughs> this is my jam. Um, you, it's a pretty simple RPG in terms of rules. You have four stats, queer, subtle, hard, soft. There's also a, a mechanic of valuing your relationships with other player characters called bonds. And uh, it just, um, you can have downtime and safe spaces like this cuddly cave where everybody is uh, lounging naked by a fire. So <laughs> this just sounds like a really fun TTRPG. I love what they're doing with it. And they have been funded, so that's super exciting. I um, want to highlight the work that is coming from Dying Stylishly Games. Yes. Oh, that's again the beauty of Kickstarter, right? Yeah, you would not you're not going to find this at your, you know, most likely you won't find this at your friendly local game store, but it can be found on Kickstarter. I mean, kudos to Dying Stylishly Games. This is unique and it looks awesome and it, you know, hey, Dungeon Bitches. I mean, it's what else are you going to say, you know? Dungeon Bitches. <laughs> All right, that's almost it. But, Ruel, did you have an honorable mention? I do have an honorable mention, Becca. And this is one I just couldn't resist it. I mean, it's an Albert plush. Um, and if you look at that, I mean, they had a goal of $5,000. They're almost at a quarter of a million dollars. And that's because we all need more plushies in our lives. That's just my personal opinion. I mean, look at the that thing. It's so beautiful, right? And yeah, plushies everywhere, folks. Oh my God, it's super cute. I love that we both have giant plushies in our background. <laughs> right? I'm wrapping the Cthulhu. You're wrapping the Star Wars. Yep. Yeah. And so yeah, the Albert. I mean, look at that thing. It's super cute. And I mean, I want to hug it right now. So yeah, Insta back. Yeah, this is a time where we all need something to hug, as you can tell from the immediate overfunding. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I mean, it made a lot of people's wallets go, mm, mm, mm. Delicious. A wallet <laughs> would gobble this up. Um, well, you know, sometimes 
there's things more important than your wallet, which is finding new ways that people can show their creativity and share things with the world. And if you're interested in sharing your zine, don't forget about Zine Quest going on through the month of February. Um, yeah, you can find all the links in the description below for all of these Kickstarters. Ruel, thank you so much for coming in and hosting the show with me today. Becca, always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right, one more time. I'm Becca Scott. That's Ruel Gaviola, and this is Good Time Society. Thank you so much for joining us here for our discussion. And if you want to hop in the discussion, come on over to our Discord. You can find that link in the description below as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with your friends. Now go forth and purchase. Bye, friends. Bye. <laughs>